Erythropoiesis is the process of forming red blood cells by the bone marrow. As we all know, the main function of red blood cells is to carry oxygen from the lungs into the peripheral tissues in order to produce energy. Red blood cells contain a special protein called hemoglobin to bind with oxygen and facilitate its transport. So, in this video I'm going to discuss about the steps in red blood cell production, regulation of red blood cell production, lifespan and destruction of red blood cells, and some clinical correlations along with above topics. In the early weeks of embryonic life, primitive, nucleated red cells are produced in the yolk sac. During the second trimester of gestation, liver is the main organ for red blood cell production. But, reasonable numbers are also produced in the spleen and lymph nodes. During the last month or so of gestation and after birth, red blood cells are produced exclusively in the bone marrow. This graph shows the relative rates of red cell production by different types of bones. The bone marrow of essentially all bones produce red cells until a person is 5 years old. The marrow of long bones, except for the proximal portions of humerus and tibia, becomes quite fatty and produce no more red cells after about 20 years of age. Beyond this age, most red cells continue to be produced in the marrow of the membranous bones, such as vertebrae, sternum, ribs, and ilia. Even in these bones, the marrow becomes less productive as age increases. The blood cells begin their lives in the bone marrow from a single type of cell, called the pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell, from which all the cells in the circulation are eventually derived. Pluripotent stem cell undergoes division and gives rise to two main types of cells. Lymphoid stem cells, which eventually give rise to T and B lymphocytes. Myeloid stem cells, also known as myeloid progenitor cells, is the other type. It can give rise to three types of cells. Erythrocytes, which is the one we are concerned about in this video. Granulocytes, which may be a neutrophil, eosinophil, or a basophil. And platelets. And it is important to note that as these cells reproduce, a small proportion of them remains exactly like the original pluripotent stem cells to maintain the supply of these. However, their numbers decrease as a person ages. So, during erythropoiesis, myeloid stem cells undergo cell division and give rise to proerythroblasts, which are the first cell type that belongs to the red cell lineage. This step of erythropoiesis is stimulated by the hormone erythropoietin, which is secreted mainly by the kidneys in response to hypoxia. Then, proerythroblasts divide to form basophilic erythroblasts, which stain with alkaline dyes. Although the synthesis of hemoglobin has already begun, these cells have a very low hemoglobin level. Then the basophilic erythroblast divides to form polychromatophilic erythroblast, followed by orthochromatophilic erythroblast. During this conversion, hemoglobin production increases, nuclear condensation occurs, and organelles shrink. So as a result, cells become much smaller compared to the early stages. At the end of the orthochromatophilic erythroblast stage, cellular nucleus is extruded from the cell and it becomes a reticulocyte. Reticulocytes also contain little amounts of basophilic material, including the remnants of Golgi apparatus, mitochondria, and other organelles. Reticulocyte is the actual stage that is released into the blood from bone marrow. And the remaining basophilic material will disappear within two to three days, and the reticulocytes become mature red blood cells. Because of the short life of reticulocytes, their concentration among all the red blood cells is normally less than 1%. Now let's discuss about the regulation of erythropoiesis. Total mass of the red cells in the circulatory system is regulated within narrow limits. Therefore, an adequate number of red cells are always available to provide sufficient transport of oxygen. On the other hand, the cells do not become numerous, otherwise they can impede the flow of blood. Tissue oxygenation is the most important regulator in red cell production. Reduced tissue oxygenation, or hypoxia, induces the formation of the hormone erythropoietin by the kidneys. Erythropoietin in turn stimulates the conversion of myeloid stem cells into proerythroblasts, which subsequently increases the red cell production. 
Conditions that lead to hypoxia include anemia due to hemorrhage or any other condition. Destruction of major portion of the bone marrow, such as in X-ray therapy. At very high altitudes, where the quantity of oxygen in the air is greatly decreased. And certain disease conditions, such as heart failure and lung diseases. Erythropoietin is a glycoprotein hormone with a molecular weight of 34,000. About 90% of all erythropoietin is produced by the kidney. And the remainder is produced by the liver. As already mentioned, hypoxia is the principal stimulus for red cell production. Renal tissue hypoxia leads to increased tissue levels of hypoxia-inducible factor 1, or HIF1, which serves as a transcription factor for a large number of hypoxia-inducible genes, including the erythropoietin gene, inducing transcription of mRNA, and ultimately, increased erythropoietin synthesis. When a person becomes hypoxic, erythropoietin synthesis begins within minutes. However, because erythropoietin mainly stimulates the formation of pro-erythroblasts, it will take about five days for the new red blood cells to appear in blood. In addition, once pro-erythroblasts are formed, erythropoietin causes these cells to pass more rapidly through the different erythroblastic stages than they normally do. Therefore, erythropoietin is essential for the production of red blood cells in the bone marrow. That is why the patients with kidney disease often become anemic with disease progression. In addition to erythropoietin, vitamin B12 and folic acid are also essential for the final maturation of red blood cells. Each of these vitamins in a different way is required for the synthesis of thymidine triphosphate, one of the essential building blocks of DNA. Lack of either of these vitamins leads to diminished DNA synthesis and failure of nuclear maturation, condensation, and cell division of red blood cells. As a result, red blood cells become larger compared to normal ones. And these red cells are called macrocytes. In addition, the progression of erythropoiesis will be much slower compared to normal individuals. Even though they are immature, macrocytes are capable of carrying oxygen as normal erythrocytes. However, they have a shorter lifespan attributable to their extreme fragility. The absorption of vitamin B12 from the small intestine is largely dependent on the secretion of the intrinsic factor by gastric glands. It binds with vitamin B12 in the stomach and prevents its digestion by gastrointestinal secretions. When the gastric mucosal function is impaired, the secretion of intrinsic factor reduces, resulting in impaired absorption of vitamin B12 and maturation failure of red blood cells. This condition is specifically referred to as pernicious anemia. However, it is important to note that vitamin B12 is stored in the liver in large quantities. Therefore, it takes about three to four years to develop anemia since the commencement of the defective absorption of vitamin B12. Finally, let's talk a bit about the lifespan and destruction of red blood cells. Red cells have an average lifespan of 120 days. Even though mature red cells do not have a nucleus, mitochondria, or an endoplasmic reticulum, they do have cytoplasmic enzymes that are capable of forming ATP. These enzymes also maintain the membrane flexibility and transport of ions. Keep the iron and hemoglobin in ferrous form and prevent oxidation of proteins in red blood cells. With time, the metabolic systems of red cells become more and more fragile and they easily rupture during passage through tight spots in the circulation. Therefore, most of the older red blood cells are self-destructed in the spleen. When red cells burst and release their hemoglobin, it is immediately phagocytized by macrophages in many parts of the body. During the next few hours to days, macrophages release the iron and hemoglobin, and some of them are transported to the bone marrow to produce new red cells and some of them are stored in the liver in the form of ferritin.